the frog, and the scorpion. Oh, those pesky interactions and relationships. What are the expectations put on such a thing? A scorpion looked around a mountain where he lived. He wanted a change of scenery. So he set out through the hills, through the forest, over rocks and vines, and he reached a river stream. It was wide and quick, and the scorpion paused to reconsider what he was trying to do. He couldn't find his way across, so he ran upriver and then checked down the river, all the while thinking, I might have to give up. I might just have to give up and turn back. Then he saw a frog sitting there on his little lily pad. So he said, I'm going to ask that frog to give me some help. What's up, frog? How you doing, sis, brother? Mr. Scorpion talking. Would you be so kind as to give me a ride on your back across the river stream? Hey, hey, Scorpion, how do I know if I help you, you won't try to kill me? This is the frog talking. Because if I try to kill you, then I die. You know I can't swim. Now, this seemed to make sense to the frog. But he asked, what about when I get closer to the bank on the other side? You could still try to kill me and get to the shore. True, true, the scorpion said. But then how would I get back to the other side of the river? I... <laughs> how do I know you won't just wait till we get to the other side and then kill me, said the frog. So constantly, the inner voice, that inner frog god <laughs> is speaking. The frog's first mind is speaking. Ah, said the scorpion. You see, once you've taken me to the other side of this river stream, I'll be so grateful for your help that it would hardly be fair to reward you with death. Right? Right. So the frog agreed. Scorpion crawled on the back of the frog. And they muddied the water and everything. Frog stayed near the surface so the scorpion went and drowned, you know. Looking out. Kicking strong. First half of the stream. Halfway across the stream. All of a sudden the frog felt a sharp sting in his back. And out of the corner of his eye he saw the scorpion removing the stinger from the frog's back. A deadening numbness crept into the limbs of the frog. You idiot, said the frog. Now we both are going to die. Why in the world would you do such a thing? Such a thing. The scorpion, scorpion shrugged could help myself. It's my nature. They both sank to the bottom of the river. Self-destruction 
It's my nature, said the scorpion. Now, we've heard different versions of this story. So eloquently spoken. However, we have to think sometimes that it's easy to look at the scorpion as, oh, that darn scorpion, bad scorpion, that wasn't right, that wasn't right. But what's good for the scorpion isn't necessarily good for the frog. And what's good for the frog isn't necessarily good for the scorpion. Hence to say, what's good for you might not be good for me. No matter what we look like, whatever ethnicity or profession, whatever. We are individual spirits in our fleshly body. Scorpions will do scorpion shit. How are we going to get mad at the scorpion for acting like a scorpion if it's in their nature? Can nature be, be changed? Should we try to change the nature? Because it doesn't suit us? Maybe we just have to go the path that we're supposed to go. It's on us to do better at navigating or rather allowing, I don't want to use the word control, who we let into our lives and who we spend energy with. It's our job to pay more attention, to be mindful. We must do our best to try to avoid to avoid traps, wasting time, being hurt unnecessarily. Pay more attention. If we do that, then perhaps we might not end up like the frog. If that's such a bad thing. You know what I'm saying. Hey, it's early. It's ponderings of the quad. My name is Trinia Murphy. I am Ponder Quad.